Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to morning prayer on this Thursday morning, Thursday the 9th of July. You're very welcome if you're joining us for prayer this morning, whether you're watching live or on the recording later on. As always, you can follow along using the Daily Prayer app or by following the link in the post description. Let's take a moment of quiet as we begin our time of prayer together. Heavenly Father, loving God, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you that we can join with one another in prayer in the name of Jesus. We ask that you'd help us to pray this morning and as we read your word, help us to hear what you want to say to us. Bring to mind people and situations that you would like us to lift up to you in prayer and then remind us that you are with us always. In Jesus' name, Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. two psalms this morning, psalm number 90 and 92. <clears throat> so starting with psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand days in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to seventy years, or eighty, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years as we have seen trouble, may your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendour to their children. May the favour of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And Psalm number 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. How great are your works, Lord, how profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass, and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed for ever. But you, Lord, are for ever exalted. 
For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evil doers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. You, O Lord, shall be exalted for evermore. Give us the music of your praise, Lord, morning, noon and night, that our lives may be fruitful and our lips confess you as the true and only God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. For the Old Testament reading this morning, we continue in the book of Judges. And today we're in Judges chapter 16, starting at verse 4 and reading to the end of the chapter. So we continue with the story of Samson. Judges 16, 4 to the end. Some time later... Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him, so that we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you eleven hundred shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you but he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head, into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric and tied it with a pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved... My strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. 
When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding corn in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again, <clears throat> after it had been shaved. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice <clears throat> to Dagon their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. <coughs> when they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women, all the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about three thousand men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more, and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. <clears throat> Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he lived many more, sorry, thus he killed many more when he died than when he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtaol in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel for twenty years. The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Luke. And today we are reading Luke chapter 18, verse 31 to the end. Luke chapter 18, verse 31 to the end. Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, 
they also praised God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you now. We acknowledge our need of you. We thank you that you are with us at the beginning of this day. Lord, we present to you this day and all the tasks that lie ahead of us. We ask that you'd help us in all things. Help us to know you with us in all that we do today. Help us to be led by you, helped by you, strengthened by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the world and its needs. And as we pray now, we ask that you'd help us to bring people and situations before you. And we pray for your church and her life, that we may be your witnesses in whatever way we can in these times. Let our lives and our words, our thoughts, our attitudes all that we do point to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you ask us in your word to pray for all those in authority. And we pray for those in government in our country. Pray for the national government, for the prime minister, for the cabinet, for all members of parliament. We ask that you would guide them with your wisdom as they make decisions which will affect the whole country. Lord, we pray for our government locally here in Coventry, for the council, the city council. We pray for the county council of West Midlands and also of Warwickshire. And we ask again that they could make good decisions in the name of justice and peace and the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all our children and young people in this parish of Binley and especially those who are part of our church here at St. Bartholomew's. 
pray for those going to school and those who are being educated at home. We especially pray for any whose home life is difficult and challenging. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for older members of our community, for those who struggle to get out, for those who are isolated, for those who are shielding, for those in our local care homes. We ask, Lord, for your peace and your protection to be with them. Father, I want to pray for members of our church and members of our families who are about to go into care homes or are or have recently moved into care homes and in this difficult season of transition where often people can't even be visited we ask for your help and your comfort Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Father we pray for schools locally we pray for our colleges and universities here in Coventry and we pray for preparations to be made for the term in the autumn, starting in September. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all of our emergency services. and We thank you for them. We thank you for the ambulance service, for the fire service. We thank you for the police. We thank you for all who are willing to put their own lives on the line on behalf of others. And we ask for your strength and your protection for all of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those who are sick in any way, and we ask for your healing in the name of Jesus. We especially pray for those on our email prayer list, and for members of our own family and our own church community. Lord, bring your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for you to comfort those in mourning whose loved ones have recently died. And we especially pray for those preparing funerals at this challenging time. Be with them all and give them the light of hope that comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect, the special prayer for today. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through to things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Have a good day. Evening prayer will be at the usual time of 5.30 tonight. Hope to see you then. Take care. God bless.